The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. A new pest that we've been monitoring here in Ontario is western bean cutworm. It's been identified in North America. It's not an invasive species. Um, it was a uh, pest in dry beans back in the 1940s and in corn in the 1970s. And all of a sudden, it started to make its way here um, around the year 2000. And so we started trapping it here in 2008, started seeing actual presence in the fields in, in 2010. And so now we're starting to encourage growers to not only put up a trap, but also be scouting for this this pest. Um, it's a moth and it flies in. It does overwinter here. Some of our research here in Ontario has shown that it overwinters, um, but it also gets blown in with all these storms that have been coming in. So we set up traps. This is a typical bucket trap. Um, there's also a milk jug trap that you can use, but the bucket trap is tends to be the preferred method to, to trap them. And it's got a pheromone lure in there that will, um, it, it expresses the female's um, sex pheromone. So it attracts all the males here. And so we've ha set up and established a Western Bean Cutworm Trap Network here for the last uh, five years now. And um, we have growers and reps and, and the researchers put up these traps um, beginning of June until the end of September to, to monitor the presence of the moth. And so that way we know when peak moth flight's happening and when those moths are mating and, and laying eggs in the field. So the network's up and running this year. We actually started to catch uh, moths um, June 5th, uh, first one in Renfrew County, way up near Ottawa, but now we're starting to see numbers trickling in that more moths are being caught. Peak flight usually happens around uh, middle of July um, and tends to be the egg laying period um, right around pre-tassel. They really like the pre-tassel stage of corn, so that's when we encourage growers to start uh, monitoring for it. So when you go into the field to go and monitor for it, um, again these moths are laying their eggs. Sometimes on a cloudy day you can actually find the moths um, in the world of the plant. Now this is quite young corn here, but but uh, typically, once, actually, they joke that Bowdy Height corn is probably the most preferred height for Western Bean Cutworm. Um, once you start to see that kind of uh, height of corn, start looking. Um, and they tend to lay their eggs mainly on, surprisingly, the hairy surface of the, the leaf, the upper surface, and usually on the top three or four leaves of the plant. So you would turn leaves over, and I admit it can be challenging if you're vertically challenged like myself, but uh, it, sometimes you can see the shadow with the sun coming through the leaf where the egg masses are. Um, once you see egg masses, randomly scout um, about uh, you know 10 plants in a row in 10 areas of the field so that you can get an estimate of how, how many plants actually have egg masses on them. If 5% of those plants that you've scouted has egg masses present, uh, then you will need to spray. But you want to time the spray so that you see those egg masses actually hatching. So they'll turn purple just prior to hatching, and then um, you'll get the tiny little larva feeding, usually on the top of the, the plant and at the tassel first. So, and that's what you want to target. So 5% of the plants with those egg masses or you know very young larva, um, that requires you to spray. Problem if you don't spray is those tiny larvae will make their way down to where the ear is. And once they're in the ear, those, those bigger larvae, they're, they're um, fifth and sixth star larvae, which are quite big, um, they can do a lot of feeding and you can get multiple larvae within one ear and so they can also help introduce ear molds and any spray at that time has is, is not been proven to be effective. When a grower is looking in his trap, he wants to look for the uh, key features that the western bean cutworm moth has to know that it is definitely western bean cutworm. They're quite large, not as big as in the picture, but um, two distinguishing features is along their wing margin, there's always a white band um, that's quite distinct, and they always have two markings along their wings. One is a perfect circle, like a full moon, and another is like a boomerang or a crescent moon, um, and that will tell them that that's western bean cutworm. These lay eggs and the little eggs on the, the leaves are, look like little tiny white cantaloupe, um, including the um, longitudinal lines that a cantaloupe would have. Those turn from a, a white to a purple um, within about a week and the purple indicates that they're about to hatch. Then you get very small larvae, um, almost difficult to see, um, but they grow quite quickly into a full-size larva, which is very distinct. It has um, two white bands along its pronotum or behind its head or the neck of the, the larva that tell you that that is uh, western bean cutworm larvae.